during a lecture entitled Discourses on Molecules, given in Bradford at St. George's Hall in 1873, James Clerk Maxwell launched into a politely veiled critique of Darwin's theory of evolution. In the heavens we discover by their light, and by their light alone, stars so distant from each other that no material thing can have passed from one to the other. And yet this light, which is to us the sole evidence of the existence of these distant worlds, tell us also that each of them is built up of molecules of the same kinds as those which we find on Earth. A molecule of hydrogen, for example, whether in Sirius or in Arcturus, executes its vibrations in precisely the same time. Each molecule, therefore, through the universe, bears the impression on it, the stamp of a metric system as distinctly as does the meter in the archives at Paris, or the double royal cubit in the temple of Karnak. No theory of evolution can be formed to account for the similarity of molecules, for evolution necessarily implies continuous change, and the molecule is incapable of growth or decay, of generation or destruction. None of the processes of nature, since the time when nature began, have produced the slightest difference in the properties of any molecule. Science is incompetent to reason upon the creation of matter itself out of nothing. We have reached the utmost limit of our thinking faculties when we have admitted that because matter cannot be eternal and self-existent, it must have been created. It is only when we contemplate not matter in itself, but the form in which it actually exists, that our minds find something on which it can lay hold. As a devout Christian, Maxwell was troubled and rejected the far-reaching implications of Darwin's theory of evolution, namely that the laws of nature could somehow organize itself into the observed structure and complexity of the universe without the apparent need for a deity. He saw the irreducible and consistent form of molecules and atoms as indicative of a creator, since to him at the time there was no understood mechanism for these forms to arise. Ironically, a few years later scientists would actually perform what Maxwell claimed was impossible, to show how matter can arise from a theory of fields based upon the developments which he himself pioneered. Yet, I think on a more abstract level, there is some merit to his analysis. While physicists can effectively describe how fields give rise to quarks, electrons, and all the fundamental units of matter, the fact that the laws of nature give rise to such uniformity of form on the smallest level, or even the fact that these laws are comprehensible, is an interesting and profound point, which many have wondered at. In 1960, physicist Eugene Wigner penned an article entitled The Unreasonable Effectiveness of Mathematics in Natural Sciences. In this article, he was expressing the core of a sentiment that had been bubbling up even before the birth of quantum mechanics. That is, how mathematics developed to describe one type of physical phenomenon can be so easily used to explain other phenomena, which had little to do with the original. Of course, from an idealistic point of view, this would seem natural, since the rise of mathematics provided a manner to represent Platonic forms in better and better ways. So, for example, while a perfect circle or other geometric shapes can be represented using a simple formula, more complex Platonic forms, or ideas, began to become possible to be represented using more and more complex forms of mathematics. Over the time, mathematicians have learned to express ideas as abstract as different sorts of infinities, sets, or classes of motion. In fact, 
one might view mathematics in general as developing a means to unambiguously represent the platonic forms of the universe. I think it is due to this fact that some theoretical physicists, in an apparent return to Pythagorean philosophy, entertain a much more radical view of math, that it somehow represents the true nature of reality. Thus, the physical universe is not just described by mathematics, but is mathematics.